Hey guys, what's going on? Now, you've seen my reviews for sprint bikes, the MaxFly versus the SP, what I like about the MaxFly, all those kinds of things. But what I'm gonna do today, and I didn't even realize this was sort of something that isn't um, much, doesn't have much availability or much uh, access resources of, is that what are the best shoes for track and field sprinters because you don't do everything in your spikes. You don't do all your sprints in your spikes. You don't do your drills in your spikes. And you don't do all of your jumps and plyometrics in your spikes either, either if you are a sprinter or a jumper. And I didn't realize this until my one of my clients, fellow YouTuber, Tyson Edwards, has got 30,000 subscribers, a little bit better than me, but anyway, give him a follow, um, uh, pointed it out to me that when he searched, oh, best shoes track and field, all that came up was spike reviews. So anyway, here we are, and what I'm going to do today is talk about what you want out of a shoe to best optimize your training and, and what really helps on the track um, for you to do your drills and your spikes, uh, to do your drills and your runs in, what not to look for, and like my personal preferences, and, and, and I'll give you a bit of a comparison between these two shoes because these are pretty common. So the first thing is... Uh, what you want to look for out of a running shoe is actually something that's got a bit of stiffness to it for your sprinting. It's something that has a bit more support than a sprint spark, obviously, so you can do your drills and get it into good positions. But you don't want something that's a complete marshmallow that's, that's you know, soft either. Um, obviously, there's lots of stuff on what are good shoes for, you know, long distance running, like the marathon or the 5K or 10K or whatever. There is a bit of crossover and carry over here, but there are some things that are a bit different that we really want to look for. Now, um, so having said that, the cushioning, we want some solid foam, but we don't want something that's too soft either. And something that will help your shoe feel like a sprint spike, and that will help you run fast in your joggers as well, is a full carbon plate. Now, don't get caught out by shoes saying, oh, blah, blah model, with a carbon plate. Unless it says full carbon plate, the company is stitching you up. And that's what ASICs did with their magic speeds. They said, ah, oh, magic speed one, carbon plate. No, 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 it was a half carbon plate. And then they had the ASICs Metaspeed Edge, the first version, that said full carbon plate. So don't get, uh, don't get caught out with that. So that's the first thing to look for. And you want something to feel like you're in the shoe because when you're running into it, say if you're running on bends or something, you want to feel like your foot's in it. Not like the Max Fly or the, the, the Vapor Flies or the Zoom Flies where it's like shoe and then sock where your foot feels like you're on top of it. Something I prefer to the Adidas, the Asics, is that it feels like your foot, like the, where it's stitching, it feels like it wraps around your foot, it feels a bit more stable. Um, so yeah, there are a couple of things you want to look out for. Um, and the reason why you don't want something that's super soft is actually longevity, because when you're sprinting, you hit the track pretty hard, you're going to compress the foam pretty quickly if you've got like a, a Pegasus or something, or even like these Mac, the, the, the Nikes, the Alpha Zoom, Nike Air Zoom Tempos, this, this specific version. Very soft foam, you, you crush it very quickly. This is soft, uh, soft not as soft and it doesn't compress as quickly. Important because by the time you do some sprints, it's gonna get you pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna take you to my favorite shoe that I've worn, got lots of kilometers out of, ASICS Metaspeed Edge Plus. This is probably your best bet, if not the ASICS Magic Speed 2s. They have a full carbon plate. They're super stiff, they're almost like a sprint spike. In my 60s, I run as a flying 60 meter sprint, I fly, I run maybe 0.1 to 0.2 of a second slower than when I'm actually running in spikes, which is crazy. Um, acceleration is a bit different, but actually when at max velocity, you get good bounce, you get good positions, and it really gets you off onto your toe here. Um, shoelaces are important, they can lap you down, and like I said, you feel like your, your foot's wrapped in the shoe. In comparison to the uh, Air Zoom Tempos, Zoom foam, which Nike's famous for in the bubble, um, but they're too soft. They feel like you're on top. It feels like your foot's on top of the shoe. You can lose, uh, it feels like you can roll really easy and it's very, very soft. And also like, you know, in an ASMR version, I don't like the sound that these shoes give off. It's like a <laughs> Where when you hit the track with these spikes, it's like really crisp. It's like 
Sounds really nice. Whereas the the Zoom Tempo and all the other Nikes that have got this bubble and really soft and squelchy, a bit of a different sound when you hear it on the track. I don't like it as much. Um, other honourable mentions for these sh for shoes that are you know potentially good for sprinting are the Adidas Takumis and the Adidas. Uh, I can't remember, there's another version, it's got the full carbon, uh, carbon rods in it. They're pretty good. You don't want the stack height to be too high because you compare these two where actually the amount of foam is way too high for sprints. You want to be close to the track because sprint spikes are only this much, but you want it to be a little bit more so you've got a bit of cushioning and support. It takes a bit of load off the joints. You want the carbon plate, as I said, maximizing your power and getting that rebound off the track, similar to the spikes. And like I said, you don't want the foam to be too soft either because you're putting some force through the track. You want the foam to stand up for a few training sessions. You can see I've worn these as well on the track. I haven't worn them that much. I've worn these probably triple, oh, 10 times the amount that I have worn these ones. And the foam looks in better nick on these shoes than these ones. Um, so, bit of a different video today, shorter video, but I'm gonna say if you want, um, oh, and the Puma Deviate Nitros are also a good shoe. Um, I'm not sure on the carbon plate on them, but they're, the foam's pretty good from a few of my track, uh, track squad mates. So, yeah. Um, Asics Metaspeed Edge, they're the go-to shoe for me. I think these are the best shoes you can get for running as track and for runners as track and field athletes. I think uh, the, the, the force you get back from the shoe, the carbon fiber plate that's angled for toe off, the foam's gonna stand up to it. You feel like you can really lock your foot down. Um, don't go wearing these as daily shoes. You'll feel your calves will get super tight. But in terms of rocking up to your running sessions, these are the best shoes to get in comparison to another Nike model that I've worn. Um, nowhere near as good. These are heats better. Um, and the uh, uh, sole on it is actually pretty good too. Fairly good grip. Um, you know, a little bit of heel contact. It can wear a little bit, but not too bad. So if you look after the shoes and you're running good, these are your best bets. Just be a shame if they came out. Or it would be good if they came out with maybe some different colorways. But all in all, Asics Meta Speed Edge are the runners to get for track and field athletes who, when you aren't using your spikes.